in this series, we'll be making a horror game from the ground up and teaching you everything along the way. From researching, theorizing, and prototyping, to main menus, UI, and sound. Join me and follow along to become the master game developer you want to be. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of creating a horror game from scratch. Today we're going to finish up all of our planning and ideas and move into actually making a prototype for the game. We'll be optimizing the Unreal Engine for what we're wanting to make and we're going to start outlining the level with very basic geometry so that way we can just get the mechanics in and actually try them. So the first thing we're going to look at is my handy dandy whiteboard which as you can see has changed since we last took a look at it um i went ahead and drew out what i want for essentially my level or the game space that the player will be playing in um so that way when we go to put the basic geometry in, we already have a little nice stage set up for it um, between the last episode and now i've put in a lot of thought into the mechanics and things that I want to have in it and I'm going to show you everything that I came up with. This is something I can't really do on camera because it's something you have to sit on and really just think about and that's why we're just going to go ahead and go over it now. So as you can see we have a main security room that has a generator in it, tools, and PC security. The PC security is where you're going to access the cameras which you can see by my poorly drawn little cameras here. While you're in this room, ghosts uh, are going to come down this hallway or they're going to come through these vents and out these side rooms and head for your security room. Using the cameras, we're going to identify these ghosts by their behaviors and when they reach our room, use a specific tool to remove them based on what type they are. If the type is wrong, then nothing's going to happen except if the ghost makes it to you, you're going to die. So let's say we use tool X for ghost Y. Well, ghost Y isn't going to die and we're not going to lose, but if ghost Y manages to get to us before we figure out what it is, we're going to die. While you're looking at the security cameras trying to figure out what each ghost type is, you will have to maintain the generator. This will just be doing things like pressing a button, filling in with oil, whatever we end up deciding uh, to make sure that all of your lights and the cameras stay on. And the tools are the tools to get rid of the ghosts. Now if you take a look at my screen here, uh, I've got five ghost types currently. We have a Shade, a Poltergeist, a Demon, a Banshee, and a Raiju. You can see that they all have different evidences so we can identify them. And then we have some exercise tools. I wanted these to be over the top and really fun to use. Um, so for the Shade, we're gonna use the Flashbang. For the Poltergeist, we're just gonna suck it up into a vacuum. For the Demon, we're gonna do a Crossbow which literally is going to shoot crosses. And for the Banshee, we're going to use a flamethrower. Now you'll note that I still have Raiju here. And basically I wanted one ghost to be the friendly ghost. Nothing happens if it gets to your room, but if you misidentify it and try to use a tool on it, it will immediately kill you. The way you identify these ghosts are, of course, by the evidence. So anything that has lights marked means that when they're in a certain quadrant, the lights there might flicker on and off or just turn off completely. Orbs means that occasionally when you're looking through the security cam footage, you may see an orb. Faster means that they're gonna move from quadrant to quadrant way quicker. And what I mean by quadrant, which I didn't quite add to the drawing, each hallway and room is going to have quadrants, and those will be basically just be a checker of where the ghost is moving as they slowly get closer to you. So if they're faster, they're going to move through the quadrants faster. Scream means if we have a special tool to listen in, if we're listening toward the ghost, we may hear a scream, which can be used as evidence. Throw means that if there are any objects around and it happens to do the throw event, it's going to throw an object. And chill. I think the security cameras can have basically a way to see the temperature of the hallway. So that way, whenever you're looking at the camera, you can be like, oh, oh, it's getting colder. It's getting colder. This is either a banshee or a shade. 
And one last note is we are going to create a journal that's going to sit next to the security thing or the security PC where they can open it and be like, okay, what's the evidence for this one? What's the evidence for this one? While they're still learning. We're finally going to be getting into the Unreal Engine. In order to get the Unreal Engine, you're gonna need Epic Games Launcher and you're going to need an account. You'll head over here to the Unreal Engine tab on the left and I personally am going to be using Engine 5.0.3. Uh, but this might get updated, but for now it's 5.0. That's the main two numbers that you're going to need. Anything below or beyond this might have slight differences in how the engine works. I would imagine the tutorial will still work just fine. However, if you find some discrepancies or something's just not quite adding up, it may be the version that you're using. Once it loads up, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. If you uh, don't have any recent projects, you'll probably start here in the games tab. What we are going to be doing is we are actually going to be clicking the first person template. And on the right hand side here, we want blueprint. The target platform for me is desktop. Quality preset maximum is fine. Starter content, yes. No ray tracing. Uh, our project name, I'm just going to call this tutorial game like that you call it whatever you'd like and we'll hit create once inside the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a performance increase with the engine the engine's very hefty and most computers don't really enjoy the new lumen system that unreal is using now it's a great system and if you have a machine that can handle it um, go for it However, I highly recommend still turning it off for the time being because even if you made a game, a lot of people probably won't be able to handle lumens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top left and we're gonna press edit. Once you hit edit, go down to project settings. When that pulls up, go up to the search bar up here at the top and just type in the word lumen. You'll see the dynamic global illumination method by default is lumens. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this to screen space beta. Then our reflection method is also going to be screen space. After that, head back to the search bar and type in shadow and move down here. See where it says virtual shadow maps? Instead, just do regular shadow maps. Again, once you know what you're doing and you know how to make an efficiently running game, I encourage you to use those things. But for now, we're going to start with something very basic and easy to run. Now press control plus space on your keyboard. This will open up the content browser at the bottom. This is basically where all the files are gonna go for the game. What I like to do is create my own folder for things that I create. So I'm gonna type in Brandon Winkler underscore blueprints like that. And when I open this up, this is where all the stuff that I create is going to go. So we're gonna create another folder now and we're going to call it levels. And you guessed it, we're gonna create a level down here in the content browser. I like to call this one just zero one and then underscore whatever we want it to be. So here we'll just type in security office like that. Double click it and uh, go ahead and just hit save selected and load it up. We'll get a big blank screen like this. Um, which is fine. To move around the space, I right clicked and that made my mouse disappear. And when I move my mouse, now I look around. E goes up, um, I think Q, yeah, Q goes down, E goes up, and then WASD does what you would expect. Now that I can see the grid here, I'm going to press Shift plus five on my keyboard to open up this modeling mode. Now, if you don't like hotkeys, which I highly recommend you get into the habit of using, but if you don't want to, they're up here in this menu. Uh, modeling is shift five, and this is how we're going to start building out our level using the geometry in the Unreal Engine. There's this thing here called the cube grid. If you click on the cube grid, you'll see that we get a much more highlighted version of the grid we just saw. And you can see that I have a little yellow square following my mouse. We can like click here, hold shift, click here, and then we've got a nice little area here. If we press E, we start building geometry. Now it's black right now because the lighting is on. We'll turn that off in just a second. But E builds up, whereas Q erases. It's a very powerful tool. So we'll go ahead and hit complete because uh, I want to turn the lights off for now. So up here where it says lit, just click that and change it to unlit. 
now whenever we go back to the cube grid you'll see we can actually see the geometry and it's not just black so this geometry is actually quite large because it starts with a power of two of five so that means that the um the grid here is 10 unreal units long so 10 by 10 10 by 10 10 by 10 10 by 10 if we lower this, like for example, if I change this to three, you'll see that the grid becomes much smaller. Now I can build just from here, switch it to there, build out here. We can even change it to one for a lot more micro of details. Do stuff like that. And it's just a very powerful tool and a very quick way to get things running whenever you're prototyping like we are. So I'm going to change this back to five on the power of two. We're going to hit complete and I'm going to actually just go ahead and delete this so we can start fresh. Like when you're creating pretty much anything, including ideas and researching, we need references. So luckily I went ahead and took a picture of my whiteboard and now we have the reference of the whiteboard over here on the side, which you guys probably won't be able to see because I have multiple monitors and I'm not recording all of the monitors, but it's up and I think that's important to show you. So we have the main security room. So let's go ahead and build out a little bit of space for the main security room. So it's actually quite square. Um, so we'll go ahead and pop that up. So now we have a little bit of a floor here. Um, something you don't wanna do, quick heads up, don't build the floor then build the wall on the same cube grid because it becomes one solid object and not two. So the reason this is an issue is gonna come down to when we start texturing everything. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and do all of the walls and floors separately so they can have separate textures, just so you know. All right, so what we need to do is make sure we have the right scale. Right now we only have an idea of how big this is, but in reality, our character might be like one of these small squares large, and then this thing is massive. To be honest, we don't really have a reference. So what we're gonna do is we're going to come up here to the top, and you see this little box with a plus on it? We're gonna click on that. We're gonna go down to basic, and we're going to select player start. Drag that onto our field here, and before we do anything, because if we hit play, you'll know, it's black, that's because whenever you hit play, the lighting turns back on. So what we're going to do is we're going to very quickly add two directional lights to give us actual light about what's going on here so we can see. Press shift one to close this modeling thing for more space. And again, up here at the top, we're gonna hit quickly add to the project on this little square thing. We're gonna go down to lights. We're gonna add one directional light. We're gonna pull this up. And if you press E, oh, I'm sorry, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I forgot this could be for beginners as well. Press W, then grab the blue handle, pull it up. Press E to switch to rotation. And we're gonna point it down about 40 degrees. And because we're being quick and dirty about this, if you press W again, hold Alt. Uh, yeah, hold, press W, hold Alt. Click the green arrow and drag, oh, sorry, and drag you'll see that I duplicated it. And we are going to make this one go the opposite of that one. So now whenever we go to lit, you'll see, we can actually see what's going on, but not on the sides, you see that? See how the sides are still black? A quick way to deal with that is turn this one to the right 10 degrees and this one to the left 10 degrees. And it's still a little, oh, well, this one worked. Why didn't this one work? Are they both? Oh, this one somehow managed to straight. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Make it so one is slightly one direction and one is slightly the other direction. And there we go. We have very quick, dirty lighting that we can use for testing. That's the only reason I did that. These won't even be here later. So we're going to hit play. And now you can kind of see roughly how big the room would be. And it's kind of small. Um... It's not super small. Um, it's very easy to actually make things way too big, believe it or not. Like, you know, for computers here, we can have a door there, one there, one there, and one there. So you yeah, have this access, this would be the generator, this would be our tools, and this would be the other door. So maybe slightly bigger. 
So what you wanna do is make sure this is selected before we click cube grid or you're gonna start building something new. Press shift four again to open up, oh, I'm sorry, shift five to open up our modeling mode. And again, see how I've got nothing selected? If I hit cube grid right now, I'm building something completely different than our original floor. So make sure our floor is selected. Go ahead, click that cube grid, and let's just make it one more in all directions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab, shift click, make it bigger, grab, shift click, make it bigger. And like that, there we go. That's a little bit bigger now. So if we hit complete and we hit play, now we'll see we've got a little bit bigger of a room. This is looking more along the lines of what I was thinking in my head. This is a pretty good room size. I think we'll use it. All right. Okay, we're ready to start working on the walls. So something we need to know about the walls. We don't wanna leave this on uh, the five steps because let me show you an example. If we start building walls that are this thick, Whenever I hit play, check out how thick these walls are. No wall is that thick unless it's like maybe the outside wall of a building. But in reality, like a log cabin would have a wall that thick. So what we're gonna do instead of doing um, the five is we're gonna bring this down to, I like three. I think three makes a decent sized wall and I'll show you. So if we hit complete, we can hit play. That looks way better for a wall. That thickness right there, because that's, you know, you could fit a, P, a two by four in there and some drywall, be about that thick. So now what I'm going to do is a time lapse forward. I don't think you guys need to watch me place in every single block. I am going to include this image uh, in the description below if you want to build this exact same thing. However, if this is not what you're wanting to build, don't worry about it. Feel free to do whatever it is you want to do um, and get creative with it. You do not have to follow me note for note. Okay, so I think I got pretty close. You'll note that I didn't include the vents in the actual geometry, and that is because they're gonna be implied vents with things like textures and stuff like that. They're not actually going to be present. Basically, the ghost will just go from here to some outside place to back in the actual level to you know imply that it went through the vent. But other than that, I think the basic geometry is complete. And with that, that is the end of this episode, guys. Again, thank you so much for partaking in this tutorial. I hope you're learning along the way. And if you're enjoying the series, like, comment, subscribe, and consider donating to my Patreon. I do this completely for free, as, as well as I've been releasing a lot of free games. So if you want to support me, the best way to do it is through donations and Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.